You can buy a complete Purina chow for, for, for almost any animal. You can get it for, for emus, you can get it for alligators, you can buy it, buy it for chinchillas, you can buy a chow that they will live on. You cannot buy a chow for bees that they can live on completely. They still need to have natural pollen. And they get uh, carbohydrates from the, from the nectar, which they store as honey, which allows them to, gives them an energy source for heating the inside of the hive during the winter. So during the winter, when there's no flowers blooming, they use the honey as an energy source for heating. But it has almost no nutritional value for the bees. Not to say that honey's not good for you. There's, honey is <laughs> way better for you than sugar and, and has certain benefits to humans. But as far as the bees, they can't raise brood. They can't create new bees just on honey. They need to get the pollen. So pollen is the real food of, of beehives. And mixed pollens, every pollen from each different plant has a different nutritional composition, different amino acid profile, different sterols, and different, different lipids, different vitamins. So bees need a mixture of, of pollens. And since honeybees evolved in Europe, European pollens are the ones they evolved with. Mo luckily, most of our commercial crops and our weeds are mostly European. It used to be that when farmers planted corn, they only weeded the corn until it got knee high. And at that point, the corn just grew up and shade out the, the weeds. Well, there are so many weeds in cornfields, you could move bees to cornfields and make a honey crop off the weeds. There's no honey from corn whatsoever, just off the weeds. All these mixed European weeds in there. Nowadays, with the advent of Roundup Ready corn, farmers do clean farming, and they farm right to the edge of the property line. They don't leave any hedgerows, and all there is is just corn and no other plants whatsoever growing. To bees, even though that's pure green as far as you can see, that's a nutritional desert, there is no nutritive value in those fields. Bees are always going to be necessary for agriculture. Roughly a third of the food you eat is dependent upon bee pollination. And the thing, good thing for beekeepers is it's, it's the best part of your diet. You, you can live on potatoes and corn and wheat, but it's a pretty bland looking plate. Okay, if you want to have any color to your plate, you want to have the green and leafy vegetables, you want to have fruits, you want to have the things that are good for you, you got to have bees to pollinate all those things. <laughs> uh, sustainability is an issue I often come to terms with. Um, you tell me what the price of fuel is going to be. You need to know what the price of fuel is going to be. How much are fertilizers going to cost? How much is diesel fuel for the tractors and for the hauling of bees going to cost? And then I can tell you whether it's sustainable. If it gets very expensive, no. It's, it's not going to be sustainable at that level. Or the price of almonds is going to have to go way up. So um, I encourage uh, beekeepers and farmers and growers everywhere to start looking at regional agriculture again, getting back so that you know, we don't, aren't hauling everything thousands of miles. Now, that's going to be tough with almonds. There's not many places in the world you can grow almonds. So if you want almonds, it's going to be in the California Central Valley. So if the price of almonds stays up, the demand for almonds, then it's going to have to be sustainable. It's just, we just have to pay the, pay the costs.